In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do Ronnie's full quest line as well as how to get the Age of Stars ending, the Ronnie ending for Elden Ring. You will access Ronnie's quest line right after you defeat Godric the Grafted and you enter this giant swamp area here. And all you have to do is head up to the left side and head up to the, the northern left side over here. At this location, you'll head up into a kind of dead end. You will strike this wall and you will go straight through the wall and collect the side of grace. Speak to Iggy over here and kind of use all these dialogue options until he has nothing more to say. He'll basically tell you where to go find Ronnie. From Iggy's location, you're gonna go into Carrier Manor up here along this wall, following this path over here, beat the boss over there, go through the wall, and then get to Ronnie's Rise over here. After you defeat the Loretta Knight, the boss over here, you're gonna head directly towards the north and you'll see there's an entrance through the wall right over here. And you're gonna go down to this tower over here, Ronnie's Rise. There will be a dragon over here that you can completely avoid if you want to. If you can fight it, you can go for it, but it will fly away when it gets low health and you'll see it later on. So go to the top of Ronnie's Rise and speak with Ronnie herself and you'll basically have some dialogue where you get to choose an option to serve Ronnie the witch. And obviously you need to serve her because that's part of the quest. She'll then tell you who her like people that she's working with are. It's Iggy, it's Blyde, and the, the, the sorcerer dude, I, I forget his name, something with an S. So go speak to them and you'll see there is a barrier around Ronnie's Rise right now. All you have to do is just go back to the site of Grace, sit down and the barrier will disappear. Your first objective is to find Blight, and he will be in Nokron or well, technically in the underground version just below Nokron, which you can access by going to the river well at this location right over here at the Siofra River Well. When you get here, the doors will open and you can take the elevator down into the underworld. Now, when you first enter the underground and you take the two lifts, you will end up in this giant open area over here with these giant pillars and it will be quite insane. Now from here, you're gonna head directly east from this location over here. You can see I moved from here to where I am now and we're going to this location over here from the temple that is on the left side. You'll find him in the distance on a ledge at the very eastern side, just on a cliff kind of overlooking all of these giant like, you know, structures. He'll basically say that we're not able to access Nokron from this location, so head back to EG just below the Korea Manor and use his dialogue options to speak to him about the eternal city of Nokron. Now to get more information, you are going to have to go to one of the other towers called this one over here, Saluvis's tower, the, the, the mage dude. So just go to his tower over there. Speak to the mage on the first floor and just ask him about Nokron and he will eventually give you a letter and also give you directions to somebody you need to meet. And this will be Selen, the sorceress. Now this sorceress is located in the beginner area here by the waypoint runes. Avoid the flower enemies here and go into the crypt version where you see there is a yellow wall which also has a little boss fight. So have fun, enjoy the boss fight. After you've defeated this boss or this like little mini boss here, go open the door behind him and you will see there's the sorceress Selen. Now you speak to her and you obviously give her the letter that Sivilis, that guy's name, that weird mage name, gave you. Essentially, she's gonna tell you that the stars are affecting fate and you need to kill Radon. So yeah, um, we're gonna go kill Radon. Before you start the fight, you wanna go back to the underground version of uh, Siofra River and speak to Blade and tell him the story you got from Selen and he'll basically tell you where to go to fight Radon, but I'm gonna tell you that anyway too. Of course, this fight takes place in Kaled to the right of Limgrave and we're gonna go to this location on the map right over here just before the Red Main Castle on the right. When you get to this location, the teleporter here should be active and you can take it to teleport immediately to the castle. You'll be able to meet a bunch of the interesting NPCs over here. Blyde will be here. Alexander, the pot warrior, is also here. When you're ready to begin the battle, go speak to the guy at the top of the kind of wall who's busy chanting and speaking to you guys. And this will start a small cutscene that you can watch. It's actually very cool. When you're done watching the cutscene, turn around and head north into this building here and go down the elevator. And you'll see at the bottom of the elevator is a teleporter here. Now this is going to teleport you straight into the boss fight to fight General Scar Scorched Radon. So good luck, have fun. After you beat General Radon, go speak to Blight again over here and he will basically tell you where you should head towards next. This is where that giant star fell and you need to go through where it created a massive crater. And this will be here on the map. As you can see in the beginner zone over here, just below Siofra River Well, at this location over here is now a giant hole in the ground. So go ahead and parkour your way down all the way until you can get into the entrance of Nokron, the Eternal City. So keep going through the city, parkour your way across all these weird sideways buildings and everything until you eventually get to a golden wall, a mist area just before a boss battle. 
Directly after the boss battle, you will be opened up to this bridge over here. Now just get on your mount and just ride and follow exactly where I'm going over here. We're basically going to a cliff ledge where we're gonna do some more parkour to jump down to an area where we can get the Finger Slayer blade that Ronnie wants us to go get for her. Now this is the location of where we're gonna be jumping off here if you do have your map revealed already. But we're gonna go basically onto that roof and basically park all the way until we get to this building here of this like lady. Cause inside there, there is a chest with a blade just at the bottom. So follow along here as I parkour down. This is the path you're gonna take. There are gonna be some enemies here that you need to fight. And it's kind of simple, straightforward. Just go through here. There's obviously a lot more exploring to do. I'm just running directly towards where we need to go so that you can follow me immediately. You can come back or collect things as you go. Basically, this is how you get down here. It's, it's really simple. And the chest is literally in this building right in front here. You just loot it. And that is the Finger Slayer Blade as well as a great ghost glove wart for upgrading your special summons. And now you're gonna head back to Ronnie's Rise and you're gonna go give her this blade. She'll also tell you now that she is going to leave and go on a very dark journey, basically. You can also head to the blacksmith EG and he will also reveal some lore about Lady Ronnie as well. It is at this point you'll notice that Rena's Rise, the third tower in that area, the very northern one, is going to have a teleporter at the top and it's now active for you to teleport to the underground city, the eternal city of Noxtella. As soon as you've taken the teleporter, there will be a coffin in front of you, and inside this coffin will be a miniature Ronnie doll, a, basically a miniature Ronnie doll. And you have to go to a site of grace that's nearby and speak to this doll three times until she eventually talks to you and reveals some, some lore and tells you to hunt and or eliminate the baleful shadows. Now you have to proceed through Noxtella here and you have to go behind that giant boss thing that's gonna be shooting at you. It's gonna be really annoying. If you can, try time it so that you sprint right past and then keep going down this river behind him. Essentially, the route that we're following on the map is this over here. So we're going through the river following this path over here, through your door over here, and then you're gonna stay on the ground. You're not gonna go up the stairs. You're gonna just stay on the ground, stay in the river all the way until you get to this area where you're gonna take an elevator and it'll take you down here and you'll go down through this like little river again and the Baleful Shadow boss fight will be at the end. So this is when you get to the city over here. Here is where you're not going to go up any of the stairs. You're just gonna stay with the river towards the right side there. Also, a side note, you can get a lot of lore by speaking to Ronnie at all of these sites of grace over here. You can speak to um, the little miniature doll and kind of talk about her history, which is very interesting. Head towards the very end of the river where you'll eventually find a building that has an elevator in it. The elevator will go down and that is a good sign because that means you're in the right one. You'll see at the end of the little river that you follow along the path that I showed you, you'll find the Baleful Shadow that you need to fight and defeat. After you defeat this boss, you will get the discarded palace key that is gonna open up a very interesting chest in Raya Lucaria Academy. But first, we are going to need a glintstone key to open up a special barrier, and this key is gonna be located right over here to the left of Lucaria Academy. When you get to this location, there will be a dragon. Don't worry, you don't have to find it. You just have to go behind it to the body that's resting against here and you'll pick up the Academy Glintstone Key and you're all good to go. Now make your way to the southern side of Academy Gate Town over here and you're gonna follow this path that I'm taking over here. So just, just keep going here, just jump over everything. It's, it's a great way to avoid all damage and just get to the gate very quickly. With that Glintstone Key, you will now be able to go through this gate. Now you are going to progress a bit through this academy town until you get to this area over here with the giant staircase on the right that you're gonna access by jumping on from here. Be careful, there is going to be a kind of little death trap over here, so all you have to do is jump onto this thing over here, wait for the ball to pause, and then go back up here, and you're gonna hide on the left here, and the ball dodges you, and then you just continue here. The gates behind him was actually a boss fight, the Queen Ranala that you did. I didn't wanna spoil anything here, so but I have to kind of show this area. But what you're here for is this chest that is usually locked if you don't have the discarded palace key. And this gives you the Dark Moon Ring, also known as the Ring of Oath, which we're gonna be using shortly. And now we head back to Noxtella where we beat that Baleful Shadow and we're gonna head into the Lake of Rot, a very horrible place. And you're gonna basically continue all the way down to the southern version to this location right over here where you'll find a coffin that you can sleep in that is gonna fall off a blood waterfall and teleport you to a horrible boss fight. 
Now there's two things I recommend you have here, and this is a Bloodhound Step Ash of War, or a weapon that has that Ash of War Bloodhound Step, as well as this item over here called Preserving Bolluses that alleviates Scarlet Rot buildup and also cures it and removes the bar entirely. This is because we are going to speed run straight across this lake of rot. All you're gonna do is literally speed run using this Ash of War Bloodhound Step through the, the Lake of Rot over here to the south, the southern direction towards the giant gate opening over here. And then you can eat those boluses to cure your rot entirely and also make sure you're using heals entirely all the time to stay alive. And this is how we got across. There's also a Sight of Grace directly across here which is nice to, to get as well. And then you're gonna make your way to the bottom here just by parkering down these kind of little uh, blocks on, on this pillar on the right side over here until you get to the bottom. And then just quickly run across without aggroing any of the enemies. You can fight them if you want to, they are quite annoying, but I just ran straight for the coffin. Now this leads to a very, very hard boss, probably one of the most annoying bosses that I've had to deal with in this entire game. So I'm not gonna spoil anything, just defeat this boss and carry on. When you defeat this boss, there'll be an area open up behind it that leads towards an elevator. Now, if you don't have the ring, the Dark Moon Ring, also known as the Ring of Oath, there will be a barrier there tell telling you that you need the Ring of Oath, and that's how you get the ring, by the way. Now, this lift takes you to a very interesting place that I actually didn't visit before. This is at the very southern left side of the map on top of this area over here. The giant place that's like really high in the cliffs that you probably would have been wondering, like, how do you get up there? This is over here. This is how you get here. As soon as you get out the building, you'll see there's like ruins of a cathedral on the hill. That is where you're going to head towards. Also, there's a dragon, so have fun. It's, I think it's the same dragon too. It's up to you whether you want to fight the dragon or not. I, I, you don't have to, so that, that's good. I do recommend getting the Sight of Grace in here. And once you get the Sight of Grace and pick up all of these special items, there is a hole towards the south of the Sight of Grace here that you need to be careful when you jump down. So yeah, the first ledge is closest towards you. And then the second one's actually not that far. I should have had a torch to do this because I thought I was about to jump to my death there. So follow along this tunnel until you get to the very end where you will see Ronnie and you can speak to Ronnie and, and interact with her. I don't want to spoil any cutscenes here. When you're done with this, you will get a cool weapon called the Dark Moon Greatsword. So someone like me who has points in dexterity, intelligence, and strength, this is a predominantly uh, intelligence-based weapon, which scales off of magic. As you can see, the Ash of War turns it into like a, I think it's like a frost magic type of weapon, which I'm assuming is gonna be quite good. I actually wanna test it soon. Now's a good time to return to Ronnie's tower and basically see the finale kind of bits of the story. If you go outside to the entrance of the tower, there is an enemy to fight. I don't want to spoil what's happening or who it is. But after you defeat them, you do get their armor and their weapon. I think it's also good to note that at this point, after you defeated this boss here, you will actually have unlocked the Age of Stars ending. You just have to finish the game. And right at the end, you'll be able to select the Age of Stars ending and watch that cinematic for Ronnie's ending of the game. Now it's time to visit Seluvis's tower because when you go there, you will be able to get his complete armor set as well as his bell bearing that you can take to the uh, Twin Maiden Husks to be able to purchase um, his items that he was selling, basically his magic spells. You will also be able to climb this ladder and jump onto the wall behind the tower over here and pick up this item, which is going to give you the Black Wolf Mask. So you can get that too. The last thing I think you should do is go speak with Iggy. He will have some final things to say, and this is the last stuff I believe you can talk to about this quest over here. You talk about something interesting that happened that I'm not gonna spoil in this video, so you'll just have to, you know, complete the quest line yourself and see where this goes. It is quite interesting, and I was quite like, you know, like invested in the story. When you're done speaking to him, sit at a Sight of Grace and then come back here and you'll see he is gone and you can collect his armor as well as a bell bearing that you can take to the Twin Maiden Husks and be able to buy his stuff that he was selling at your Twin Maiden Husks. And this is basically going to unlock your Age of Stars ending. So now when you defeat the game, when you defeat the Elden Beast, you will now have the option to select the ending of the Age of Stars where Ronnie is basically there. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you so much for watching.